time this morning. We came all the way down just to see all the preachers in the pulpit, and especially uh, to Pastor Staples. We came today just to be with you. And I want to thank my family members for riding with me. You know, these folks been up since 6 this morning. Getting ready for church. By the time you come to church, we're leaving church. They some singing people on today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want you to bow your heads with me for just a second. Father, we just pray right now and we thank you for being who you are in our lives. You blessed us in our coming out, our going in. God, you blessed us from the time we came into this world. You have been a way making friend. God, you've kept us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Many of us have had some hills to climb. Yeah. We've had some valleys to go through. We've had some sleepless nights. But through it all, you've been that good. God, you've been just that good to us. We just want to say thank you, Lord. You've been so good that many of us can look back and see your footprint all over our life. You've been that good. Some folks who started off with us aren't here today. You've been that good. God, you've been so good that people are confused about how we made it out of what we made it out of. You've been just that good. You held the enemy back and did what only you could do. You've been that good. We just want to say thank you collectively on tonight for the good the gracious God you've been in Jesus' name. Amen. Just say amen, amen with me. Amen. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight. I'm not going to keep you very long. I'm hungry. <laughs> Anybody else hungry? I am hungry. And I, if somebody said we was eating it, that is right, right? All right, all right. So see, if I'm not, if I'm not eating, you're going to get like five minutes. If I'm eating, I'll go all the way, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look at somebody and say, close the book. Close the book. Touch somebody and say, just go ahead on and close the book on that. You know what? Between the book of Malachi and the book of Matthew, 400 years passed. And God didn't say a word to anybody. From the moment the book of Malachi ends, God goes into silent retreat. No angel visited the earth. They had church like they always had church. They clapped like they always clapped. They sung like they always sung. But God didn't even bother to show up. I, I, they, they gave them the offering to build temples. And they did all those wonderful things. They elevated people in church. The choir sung, the ushers, usher. But God didn't say a word. He didn't even bother to show up. And the last thing he said was in the book of Malachi. And 400 years were passed before God would say anything. And let me tell you something. Anytime God get quiet, something powerful is about to happen. I can't even let somebody know that you think God didn't get quiet in your life. It's only because he's planning something bigger than you can even imagine. And when God get quiet, he's going to birth something that has never been seen before. God found himself in a dilemma. What would he do when Adam fell? Certainly Abraham would be the man to bring us back to God. But when Abraham got down to Egypt, he went on and told a lie. God get quiet. Uh, 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 certainly somebody like, like Jacob would be the man. Oh, that's right. He stole his brother's birthright. God didn't even bother to say a word about it. Surely somebody like Moses would be the man that would bring us out. But Moses had an anger problem. And God said, speak to the rock. He struck the rock. God didn't even say nothing about all that. Surely David would bring us out. But he was standing on the balcony looking at Bathsheba. And he wore glasses. They steamed up. God didn't even bother about all that. He got all quiet about all that. Surely Solomon with all of his great wisdom would bring us out. But Solomon could do it. And all of a sudden, God decided I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get quiet on you, and then I'm going to fix it myself. Tell somebody and say, God, I got to fix that itself. The name of Jesus appears in the Bible 13 
970 times. The only name close to that is the name of David, and that appears 968 times. As a matter of fact, the first name in the New Testament is the name of Jesus. The second name is the name of David. The next to the last name in the New Testament is the name David. The last name is the name Jesus. So when God got quiet for 400 years, he could even knew as great as David was he couldn't send a David to get you and, 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 and as great as Abraham was, Abraham couldn't get the job done, I know that Noah built a ship in a desert and it had never rained before and he preached about something that nobody understood it, but God didn't send Noah to get you I know, I understand, I get it, Mount Zion is the mother of all Baptist churches in Baker, West Virginia, yeah I grew up here, I remember that, but God didn't send Mount Zion to get me. When it came time for God to come and get me, God himself dressed up in flesh because what I needed no man could have done. Go on and touch somebody and say, close the book. And all of a sudden, after 400 years, God planted himself as a seed down in the birth canals of a woman. Can you imagine the audacity of God to pass by a thousand breathless beat of angels' wings to become a decimal point between time and eternity? And God himself steps out and says, I know what I'll do. I'll come and get you all by myself. And can you imagine Mary delivering something that turned around and delivered her? Only God could be that off the chain. Touch somebody and say, close the book. God grows up as a baby. He has to be breastfed. His diapers has to be changed. God had to be potty trained. Can you imagine somebody potty training God? I mean, come on. Somebody had to wake up with God at night and burp it. Somebody had to wake up at God at night and change it. Can you imagine what that felt like for Mary? Looking in the face of God. God has become a baby. All the angels in heaven must have held their breath. All the demons in hell must the one that God has went completely out of his mind. He has put himself in harm's way. You mean to tell me that God laid himself down in a manger? All we got to do to take over now is kill God. Tell somebody, close the book on that. It, 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 it messed me up because, because God hid himself in a woman and all of a sudden the creator becomes the created. That is the equivalency of you trying to save a roach and becoming a roach. You, 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 you got to understand that when God came into the world, he looked high, he looked tall, it wasn't nobody who could do what needed to be done for you. And so what God decided is I'll do it myself. And, 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 and you got to understand that God has showed up all through the Bible. He has showed up in the Old Testament when Hagar was at that well and she talked to that angel, angel of the Lord, it appears with a capital A. That was Jesus she was talking to in his pre-incarnate state. You got to understand that God went through some changes to get you back. God went through some changes. If you read Genesis chapter 8 verse 4, when the, when the storm was over and Noah came out the boat, he would found himself on a place called Mount Ararat. And the word Ararat means to reverse the curse. Isn't it interesting that when Noah got off the boat, the Bible gives you the date that he got off the boat. And this would be the same date in the future that Jesus would be crucified. As a matter of fact, they came out the boat on Passover, even though Passover had not been instituted yet. I came to tell somebody that even though you haven't came out or what you in yet, God has already made provisions to get you out. So you might as well go on and close the book now and get ready for a breakthrough. Touch somebody and say, close the book. So, 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 so this man Jesus, this man Jesus, this man Jesus, what, what God does is incredible. Uh, 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 they know that Jesus is a baby. So, 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 the wise man, they, 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 they come from the east and, and, and Herod wants to kill him. And God takes Jesus and hides him in Egypt. They go on to talk to this side of the road. He hides him in the place that he called his people out of. I'm, I'm talking about years ago. He hid him in Egypt. He sent him to the place where his people had begged to get out of. And God hides him in a place where the devil will least expect to find him. I'm here to tell you that some of us, God was here 
did in us when we were walking around doing everything that we were big enough to do. And the only way you escape is the devil never expected to find God, not in not, not in somebody like you. Not somebody that drunk as much wild Irish rose as you drunk. Certainly God can't use you. Certainly God can't use somebody whose life has been like your life has been. Certainly God can't use Tell somebody, close the book on that. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, 400 years pass, and here comes God, and he starts talking real crazy. He shows up at the temple where ain't no action been going on for 400 years. You ever been sitting up in church and people doing the same old thing every week, week after week? And really, quite frankly, you're coming to church, you're putting your money in because you know it's the right thing to do. But you really want to get up and scream, when is something going to happen up in that place? Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like I'm sick of the same old songs? I'm sick of the same one. I came out today to see God heal somebody. I came out today to see God deliver somebody. I came out to see God save somebody. I came out to hear a real word from the Lord. I'm sick of the same old thing week after week and God ain't saying nothing. You ever pray that after God to turn your situation around and God just don't say Nothing. You prayed, you'd have gotten the prayer line, you'd have people to lay hands on you, you'd have been prophesied to, everything was right there. And God still ain't said nothing. You get so much oil on you, you slide right on out to church, but God ain't said a word to you. Come on, God still ain't said nothing. Tell somebody, close the book on that. And so according to the word of God, now, 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 now he's born of a virgin, but, but, but the first time that God releases a word, he sends the angel down to see Zachariah. Now this is a man that has gotten old. Him and his wife have wanted to have children, but they are well past childbearing years. And the angel comes down, and Zachariah is working in the temple. And the angel tells Zachariah exactly what's about to take place. But some stuff, sometimes we've been in a bad way for so long that we don't even believe that nothing good is going to come out of what we've been in. Touch somebody and say, some good didn't really come out of me. Just go and tell somebody. Say, if you've been through what I've been through, you'd understand that I'm due a blessing. Just go and tell somebody. Don't be afraid to tell somebody, it's my turn to get blessed. You don't know what it took for me to get here. You don't know how long I've been silent in my life. And he's promised me that it is my turn for a blessing. Touch three people and say, it's my turn. It's my turn. Tell them, be careful how you treat me because it's going to be an overflow. Be careful how you talk about me because you just might need me. And I know I've been sitting here broken and jumped turkey for 20 years. But God told me that it is my season. It is my time. It is my healing. It is my deliverance. And I'm closing the book on yesterday. Close the book. Well, 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 this man, Jesus, see, you got to be careful how you look at this man because he wasn't no ordinary man. I know how the church look at Jesus. The church look at it like, uh, we got to be decent and in order. But I came to let you know that when Jesus showed up, everything got indecent and out of order because when Jesus showed up, he upset the norm. He jacked up all of their theology. He knocked out. He took the Baptists off the church. He took the holiness off the church. He took the Methodists off the church. He took the Catholic off the church. He showed up all by himself. Dead people got up and started walking when he showed up. Crippled people started walking. Can you imagine somebody like Jesus, he to put the liquor store out of business, the boy turned water to wine. You know, this boy was off the track. You didn't have to go out to the most mortgage board because if he found a couple pieces of fish or a piece of bread, he found everybody in the church up and then the all day. All Jesus did was bless the bread, broke it, and gave it to him. Somebody say, yes, he was. This boy upset the status quo because folk didn't really like him because whenever he showed up and something off the chain was about to happen. You couldn't be in no dead church and he come up in the joint. You couldn't even be on your way to the graveyard, pass by him. He stopped the funeral, touched the casket, and dead people sit up and start talking. You got to be careful how you handle somebody like Jesus. Tell somebody to be careful how you handle him because he in here. 
And, and the devil tried to catch him sleep and kill him, but they fooled around and woke the boy up. And he woke up and, 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 and he rubbed his eyes. What, 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 what? Peace. And gale force winds and monsoon rains sit down and shut up. You got to understand who you serve. It. Tell somebody, you don't know who I'm serving. You got to understand how much power this thing you call Jesus has. You don't know who I'm serving. You got to understand when you sing it, we don't need no more dead people in the choir. We need some folks that's going to sing with the love of God. You got to understand that many people been in church so long that they ain't seen nothing. They don't think they can see nothing. And God is sending some new people in. In, that they ain't on that. They didn't come in to see what you could do. They came in to see what God could do. And I'm telling you, close the book. Tell somebody, close the book. So this man, this man, this, 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 this man, Jesus, this man, uh, Zachariah is working, and, and the angel tells Zachariah, he said, well, you know what, because you didn't believe this, you ain't going to be able to talk. Just go home somewhere, sit down and shut up. Sometimes I wish people in church would just shut up. Just, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? I, 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 when, when God tries to send a word through somebody, oh, that can't happen, honey. We, we are not. I don't need to hear all that. I want to be around some people that can say, healed in the name of Jesus. I want to see some people that say, with this strike, we are the head and not the tail, above and not the knee. I want to be around some folks that say, no weapon formed against the church shall prosper. I want to be around some people that know that God is real. Tell somebody to say God is real. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the angel comes and, 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 and Elizabeth gets pregnant. Now, I need you to understand that this was pre-medical science. This was before they had medicine to do this. And, and, and when God says something, when God say something, old men turn young. When God say something, the cycle of life reversed itself. When God told them, Elizabeth was so jacked up about it that she hid herself. Now there's a reason why she's hiding because she's carrying something inside her that nobody's going to believe she's carrying anyway and to make matters worse even though she's pregnant the baby has not kicked, the baby has not moved, the baby has done nothing but lay there inside her. And then the angel goes about six months later and talk to a young virgin girl and tells her she's going to be the mother of the Savior. Elizabeth has hid herself. Elizabeth is carrying the forerunner of the Christ, but the forerunner is laying in her stomach about to be stillborn if something don't happen in the next three months. I got a feeling if the church don't get an infusion in the next few months, we're going to have some shit. And all of a sudden, Mary gets pregnant. She's in her first trimester. The moment she says, let it be done unto me according to your word, she was in her first trimester. And then the angel told Mary, Mary, you can't talk to just anybody, but I want you to know that your cousin Elizabeth, who was called barren, is now pregnant six months. And the Bible says that Mary got in a hurry and she went to see Elizabeth. Now Elizabeth has John the Baptist in her, but she's hid because her baby ain't moved. Elizabeth has John the Baptist in her, but she's hid because she's afraid of what people are saying. Elizabeth has John the Baptist in her, but her energy is gone. She got a husband that can't talk, a baby that can't move, and here comes Mary. Understand that the Bible says that, that that Mary went to the hill country and she finds Elizabeth. So that means that she went to her cousin's house. She knocked on the door. Elizabeth is here. So Zacharias opened the door, but he can't say nothing. Elizabeth is here because she can't do nothing. And in walks Mary with the baby Jesus down on the inside of her. He hasn't formed fingers yet. He hasn't formed any legs yet. He's just a seed down in her womb and she salutes 
salutes Elizabeth, which means that she kissed her on each cheek and she would whisper in her ear this word, Salome. Now, we do know that when she whispered in her ear that the word Salome, your voice pattern comes off your stomach because you must contract your stomach muscles to push air back up through your lungs, not up through your vocal cords, using your lips, your tongue, and your teeth to make a sound. But the origin of speech is out of your stomach. And in Mary's stomach was the baby Jesus. So when she said peace, it went down her ear gates to travel down into her womb. And the Bible says that John the Baptist leaped in her womb. I'm telling you that what God is getting ready to do for the church, somebody ought to leap off on credit and tell God what he Because we've been having church in our church, honey. We've been having. Oh, 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 I, I, I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. I, I, I came to Baker, West Virginia a, a couple of weeks ago, and my brother and I agreed, and I told our church, I said, now listen, at 9 o'clock, uh, uh, at, at, at 9 45, 10 45 this morning, it's some people in Baker, West Virginia that's counting on us to praise God. I gave my word that we would praise God with them at this time, and God blessed us so much that I told them in Bible study on Tuesday night. I said, don't tell the people that's not here, but at 9 o'clock in the morning, we gonna lose our mind because we're tired of people being broke in our church. We're tired of people being sick in our church. We're tired of people being depressed and tired of people being angry. Touch the minutes and close the book. Let me get on the time. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they, 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 Elizabeth has John the Baptist. Mary is pregnant, and, and God manipulates the circumstances. He manipulated him, and he calls a, a heathen king to say, everybody go back to where you came from, because I want to assess this. So they had to go back to a place called Bethlehem. <laughs> he cannot be savior if he's not born in Bethlehem. Look at somebody and say, God has put you in the circumstances you're in to get you to your blessed place. Go ahead on and tell somebody. Yeah. You think you're in bad circumstances. Well, let, let me let, 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 let me fast. Let, let me fast forward because I'm out of time and I can't get on the highway. Let me fast forward. So 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 he, he's born in Bethlehem. He's born in a barn, but where else should the lamb be born at? They, 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 they put him in a manger, in a feeding trough. Now, I believe had you been born in the palace, somebody would have told you that you ain't good enough to have it, but he was born in a place reserved for animals. Now, here's the thing. When they went to that inn, did you know that David had once owned the place where they said the son of David could not be born at? And many if you don't even realize the devil is denying you what God has already said is yours. And the only thing you have to do, you don't have to fight hard, but you have to stand up and refuse to allow the enemy to do what he's doing in your life. Yeah. Touch somebody and say, close the book. Uh, 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 I'm going to get there. Yeah. Wasn't enough room for him. He is, he's born in the morning. Oh, this is cool. Wise men. All that stuff is cool. All that stuff. It really looks good, doesn't it? Then all of a sudden, he grows up. Mm. Yeah, you all right? You got to get this. I need to come down here. Is that all right? Yes, sir. The boy grows up a carpenter. Yeah. <laughs> he grew up a carpenter. What does a carpenter work with? Hammer, nails, and wood. Right. How many times do you think he reached his finger in the bucket to get a nail and stuck his finger? How many times do you think he crossed a piece of wood and scratched his head because something's going on on the inside? What am I trying to tell you? That God will put you in a place that don't look like it's going to work out, but it is designed to bless you because of everything that he went through to get to where he was. And then it happened. Go home now. Can I read the scripture to you? This is when it happened. 
he, he faces the devil. He wins the battle. He comes out to desert. He comes out. He comes out. Now, 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 you got to get this. And when he comes out, he has faced the devil. And when he went in, he came out with something he didn't have when he went in. Because every time you have to face the enemy, you come out better than you were before. Uh -huh. Because it says this in Luke chapter 4 and 1. Stay with me now. Okay, here we go. Here, here we go. I'm making up the background. Let's do it. It says that Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. Now, let me stop here. Can, can, can I teach you a little bit? Yeah. The, the Bible says that he was led by the Spirit to a place where the devil could grab him. No, 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 you don't want to hear it. The Bible says that the Spirit took him and led him into the place where for the next 40 days it will be him and the devil one on one. Quit looking for people to get you out and just go ahead on and say it's time that I face my own demons. It's time I pray for myself. It's time I let God have his way. Quit telling everybody what you're going through because sooner or later you will have to face it for yourself. Talk somebody and say close the book. Verse 14, after the devil, it says this in 13, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Tell somebody, don't expect the devil to be gone too long. As long as you're in the flesh, he'll be coming back sooner or later. Go ahead. Uh, go tell somebody, he'll be back sooner or later. Ain't no need to sit up and acting like you that holy, honey. You weren't that holy coming in here. You cussed three people out on the way here. Come on, come on, come on. And the Bible says, and Jesus returned, now listen carefully, in the power of the Spirit. Now you got to get this. When he came out the desert, he had something coming out that he did not have going in. Oh, he was always God. He was always Savior. But he had to come through a process or he couldn't have took your place. Touch somebody and say, warning, I'm under construction. You better put, you better put a hard hat on when you're around me because something's something to fall off on you because God ain't do with me yet. Somebody just going to say, warning, warning, woman under construction. Man under construction. Go ahead on and say under construction. Kill me this morning, Leroy. We ain't going to start that tonight if you're not in here. I, I, I want to get to the point. Jesus comes into his hometown. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, have mercy. Go ahead. They gave him the book and said, Preach. Preach. Come on. <laughs> and, and he said this. Didn't nobody say The Bible says that he opened the book. Yes, sir. Yes, he sir. opened the book. Yes, sir. He opened the book and he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. Listen to what he told him now. Listen now. Listen now. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Yes, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he was supposed to talk about the vengeance of God, but then the Bible says, and he closed. <laughs> the Bible says, and he closed the book. Do you realize there's a reason why he shut the book? He shut the book because vengeance don't happen until the second coming of the Savior. And while we're under the dispensation of grace, you better take full advantage of the time you have. I came to tell you that you need to close the book on who you don't like at church. You need to close the book on not tithing. You need to close the book on talking about other people. You need to close the book on putting your nose where it don't belong. God sent me to tell you, shut that book. Tell somebody, shut the book. 
is knowing when to end one chapter and open up another one. And until you can learn how to shut the book, no matter how much the enemy bring up your past, if God has put it under the blood, you need to close the book. I don't care where you been, who you lay down with, who you got up with. If God said it's behind you, close the book. You could have been the biggest whore that ever walked the street. But if God cleaned you up, you might as well close the book. I came to tell the drunks. I came to tell the ex-drug addicts. Don't you let nobody talking about you kick you out of church. Because if God closed the book, that means you holy. Learn how to lift up your hands. Bless your God. Shut the book. Shut it on your mouth. Close it on your tears. Close it on your past. Touch somebody and say, close the book. He closed the book. He closed the book. He closed the book. And now the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter number five, the Bible says in John, he saw a book, but nobody could open it. And he wept much. And then the angel told him, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he has prevailed to open the book and lose the seals thereof. What was in the book? Blessings was in the book. Healing was in the book. Deliverance was in the book. The lion of the tribe of Judah, he has prevailed. He can open the it is your turn. It is your season. No matter what nobody think, God said, close the book on your past. And I'll open a new chapter in your future. Tell somebody to close the book. Close the book. Close the book. But you don't know close the book. But I used to close the book. I swear when we close the book.
is a mighty good God. We've been up all day, and I am, believe me, I'm tired. But close the book. It is never important to allow anything, I'm telling y'all, anything, to separate what made you from the love of God. And do you know anything you repented of and put under the blood? It is under the blood. And I was telling them this morning, did it ever die, die on you that Moses did nine plagues and Pharaoh would not let them go. But when he applied blood to the doorposts and the death angel came down, he passed by the people with the blood on them. Do you really think everybody in them houses was good people? No. But when they saw the blood, the death angel passed over. God has applied the blood to your past. Now close the book. You quit bringing it up because God has no clue what you're talking about. Because once it went under the blood, it don't matter. Close the book. So I came tonight to talk to somebody who need to move on to a new chapter. And if you are living the past, living, I'm talking about in the guilt and the shame of something that is bigger than you are, make your way to the altar tonight. We're going to close the book together. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, so you're telling me he gave me this and all y'all on the right page. You better come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Let's close the book. Come on. Come on. Stand right here. You can't be ashamed because if you deny him before men, he has to deny you before the Father. Come on now. Come on. Let's shut the book.